Hi everyone, are you interested in the same custom parts that I built for Cruise Missile? Don't forget to check out supercruises.com if you would like your own versions of the same parts I used on my car. Good morning everybody, welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. So. I just got over the worst illness I've ever had to deal with in my life. It was shingles. It was incredibly painful and I felt like crap for, I think like almost a month. I'm definitely excited to be filming today. I have a really cool video that I planned that I've been intending on filming, but I just didn't have the energy to do it. You guys basically saw a video where I was able to make this blow off valve work. It is a kit you can get on my website. Since I'm the only guy that ever figured out how to make it work, I'm doing all the testing and so far so good. However, my blow off valve system is going to be coming off the car because we're shooting a video on diverter valves. Specifically, it's the HPRV version, the factory diverter valve, and go fast bits version. What I'm going to do is let me set you up so we can go over why each one is important and what application you should use each one for. Okay, so the first thing I want to say about diverter valves and modifications to cars, there's a lot of advice on the internet. And what I found is every time there's advice involved, usually, someone wasted money on something and to justify how much money they spent they pretty much tell you it's the best thing in the world just to make themselves feel better it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the best thing in the world for your car so i have a lot of things on this bench i have the go fast bits diverter i have the hprv i have a factory diverter i have a i believe this is called the digital caliper i have a temperature gun which i don't need but it's here and i have a pile of melted solder this is only on here because I like it. I don't want to lose it. Oh, and let's not forget my factory turbo. This is the factory turbo because as you guys know, I have a large turbo in the car. What is the reason for this video? Well, I bought the Go Fast Bits diverter valve because I wanted to see what would happen with the big turbo. As everyone knows, when you're running a large turbo on the Chevy Cruze, you pretty much deal with this loud flute noise. little bit lean. Turn the camera back on when we get there. It doesn't matter if you have a Bad News Racing Turbo. It doesn't matter if you have a ZZP Turbo, a Turbo Bay Turbo, which I have. It's going to make the noise because of the design of the turbo. Right in here is where your bypass valve goes. When your car basically builds pressure, it builds it in this port, okay? This is your discharge on the turbo. When you need to relieve that pressure, this opens and it recycles the air back into the intake on the turbocharger, or this would be the suction side or the inlet side. The reason you get a noise is while this turbo is spooling, the diverter valve opens slightly and you get this sort of whistle grinding noise through here. So I decided, let me try messing around with valves. My fix was doing an actual blow off valve. Instead of me recirculating the air back, it just lets the air out one and done, sometimes two, depending on how much pressure there is. No more screeching noise, no more problems. That's why I came up with this. But if you don't wanna go with the expense of going crazy changing your application, you can try changing your valves. Okay, so I mentioned you can change your valves. If you're trying to build the maximum amount of boost pressure out of your car, you're gonna to wanna to go with an aftermarket diverter valve. The factory one is not capable of sealing. There's no rubber seal at all. Air will leak past at a certain point. I have found that about 20 PSI, this thing will leak pretty bad. There are two excellent choices on the market for diverter valves, but they're only good in two different applications. I'm gonna show you the differences between the two and why. Okay, first things first. Let me show you the operation of the Bad News Racing HPRV. Here's the Bad News Racing HPRV. This is designed to go in here, and when this needs to relieve pressure, it will actually open, relieve the pressure, then close. Great design. However, when you're running a big turbo, this will hold a lot of pressure. I myself run about 30 PSI, and this holds the pressure well. The problem is when this starts to limit the boost pressure to about five PSI while you're driving, that's what starts to give you that screeching noise. Any diverter valve designed like this will do that. It doesn't matter if it's bad news racing or not. 
People who run the Go Fast Bits version will tell you, if you have a big turbo, this will kill that noise on the turbo. There's a problem with that, let me show you why. It has a plunger. The problem is this is not the plunger. This actually, even though it moves by hand, does not move when it's in your turbo. What this diverter valve does is it actually lets air out through the center. This is your new plunger right here. So when the diverter opens, it's just opening here, which is why it's changing the sound. This will kill that big turbo flute noise. The problem is, look how small that hole is. The bad news racing valve actually opens and closes, letting the air out of your turbo. What this is doing is it's opening and closing this, and the amount of air that you're getting out is through this tiny little hole. Again, this plunger does not open and close. It escapes through this little hole. This causes a massive restriction on your turbo. So instead of the air being released because the plunger moves and it gets diverted back into here, it goes through this itty bitty little hole, basically comes out through the center of the go fast bits valve and then gets recirculated through this tiny little port here and that tiny little port shoots the air back in the idea that go fast bits went with is you restrict the amount of air that's coming out of the turbo you'll get better throttle response because you'll have more air in the turbo when you hit the gas again this is true however it will also cause damage to your turbo so if you're running a large turbo and you go put the go fast bits diverter in it will cause thrust bearing problems, impeller problems. You won't be relieving the pressure fast enough and what you're gonna start doing is chopping the air and getting this flutter noise. What's happening is the boost pressure cannot leave the turbo and the impellers on the turbo are actually chopping the boost pressure up. It makes a really cool sound, but you're also costing yourself future damages. You don't wanna run the go fast bits diverter valve on a big turbo application because you're gonna damage a really expensive turbo and possibly cause engine damage in the future. Please be mindful when you're buying your parts. Okay, the next thing you're going to need to do is basically get this plunger out. I've had this apart so many times it should just pop right out. Don't lose any of these pieces. I always leave them with my HPRV stuff. I don't like the Go Fast Bits box because it literally has a hole in the bottom that can fall out. So the Go Fast Bits version comes with a much stronger spring for their version of the plunger. This is their plunger, see the little O-ring? I can't stress this enough that this does not open and close and I really hope people understand that and why it's a problem. You want to basically orient this so you have your connector sticking outward so you can get to it. I mean, you could put this on pretty much in different directions. You don't want to make that mistake. And be careful because when you're putting this in the car, this could actually fall out and you could lose your spring. Okay, so one thing I've had people bother me about over the last couple of years was how to get this off. Basically, you're gonna slide this white clip over, push in on the connector toward the valve, squeeze the white clip, and then the connector pops right off. A lot of people have trouble getting this thing out of here. And then you have your three bolts on the valve. Okay, the new valve is going in. Just make sure to aim it this way.
Okay, so this thing sounds pretty good, just revving it in neutral. Uh, the car can only hit about five to seven PSI, so that's not really a full test of the valve. It sounds pretty good right now. I'm actually a little excited. I'm hoping my fears are just fears and this thing performs great. So let's get out on the road. Let's see what happens when we're running like 30 PSI through this thing and see what it actually sounds like. I'm hoping it can actually hold 30 PSI. That's one of my fears. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make modifications if it can, but we'll see. So next time you see us, we'll be on the road. All right, so I just had a couple minutes to drive over to this one road I like, and I can already hear the turbo struggling on diesel. I mean, this thing sounds good when it opens. But I can hear that noise. I don't know if you guys can hear this noise. Right there. That's the turbo struggling. So that was fun. I tried something new. This is not the original ending to the video. I was actually miserable because I just got done with dealing with shingles. So the ending of this video was sort of bothering me and I hated it and the energy was really low and I was tired and I was in pain and it just bothered me. But here we are a week later. I did something cool and got some rolling shots of the car. I have no idea how good the footage is gonna be. It's gonna be in the video, but I'm not sure if the microphone on the camera was able to pick up the go fast pitch diverter opening and closing. I wanted to try something new. I thought it was fun. Hopefully you enjoy it. So, originally I was telling everybody that putting the go fast bits diverter into your turbo after hearing that low RPM noise, you're gonna damage your turbo. This is true on a factory turbo. However, I spoke to Matt over at Turbo Bay since I filmed that footage and I was talking to him about his thrust bearings on the turbo. Basically, thrust bearings are behind the big fan that's inside the turbo. You have an impeller blade that's basically a high speed fan. This is what builds your pressure. When you have that noise happening, that's basically the turbo struggling. However, the thrust bearings in these turbo bay turbos are so strong that that little bit of struggling doesn't even affect it. I flat out asked Matt, he said, don't even worry about it because they're so strong and they're so big and they're so heavy duty that that's nothing for the turbos. Now, I have no idea if the Bad News Racing Turbo has the same type of thrust bearings. I have no idea if the ZZP Turbo, which I have yet to see one, but I've heard they make them. I don't know anything about them. Does that mean those turbos are going to have a problem with the go fast bits diverter valve. It's gonna have the struggling problem, I just don't know if it's gonna have thrust bearing issues. Eventually, I will find out some information on the other turbos. I can only talk about the turbo I have because I literally talked to the owner of the company about it. That's the only reason it's in the video. So the original ending of this video was me basically saying, don't put the go fast bits diverter in. But after talking to Matt, I feel better knowing that the go fast bits diverter will not really damage the turbo and you know what after driving the car for a little while that that noise really doesn't bother me nowhere near as much as that loud flute noise uh that the turbo was making when you first put the turbo in and you don't realize you know what's causing it so that low rpm noise that could potentially damage a turbo luckily will not at least from what i can tell on a turbo bay turbo and it gets rid of the big turbo flute noise. I cannot stand that noise. I was miserable driving the car. I'm really happy it's gone now. So as far as closing this video out, I hope it's a little more upbeat. When I originally filmed it, I was miserable because I just got off being sick for over a month and I was in a lot of pain and I wanted to basically save the video because I thought this was a very important video for the cruise community, which is why I spent the extra money to get the GoFast Bits diverter and see what would happen when I put it in the car. I appreciate everyone who supports me because if I didn't have members supporting the channel, subscribers liking and sharing, and 
people buying parts from me, I would not be able to go out and spend the money to test these things on your car. So let me waste the money. Let me figure out the best way to run these parts on your car. And that way you only need to spend the money once instead of going out and doing what I do where I just waste money on junk. And sometimes the stuff doesn't work, sometimes it does. But at least I can save you from wasting your money. As usual, I would like to thank everybody for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to go to my website. I have a lot of new updates on there for you. Also, I started putting repair documents up. If you guys need the repair documents, there's a section. You can use the documents for free for the Generation 1 and the Generation 2 crews. It's at www.supercruises.com. It'll bring you right to the section where I have all the parts and you can get to the documents. I will keep adding more and more documents pretty much monthly. You can use them for free. I just asked that if anything helped, please donate to the website. The documents are very expensive to buy, and the more donations I get, the more I can buy, the more I can put up. The more you help me, the more I can give back to the cruise community. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a very nice day, everybody, and if you ever need anything, just ask.